All right, everybody, I am back today with my Dyson V11 Outsize. I've had this thing, I want to say, for probably close to two years now. Um, but there are some things that I want to start the video off by saying, and this is where it gets super complicated, and I hope that it doesn't complicate things too much. There are three suction settings on the V11 outsize, or most of the V11, or maybe even the V10 series. So you have a medium suction setting, which it is medium in handheld mode, but as soon as you attach it to the um, carpet cleaning head or the motorized brush head, it switches it to what's called auto mode when you're on this middle setting here. Um, the auto mode allows the Dyson to reduce the suction on hard floors and increase the suction on carpeting. Though, if it's a really low pile carpet, it's probably not going to adjust the suction setting because there isn't enough resistance um, that the motor, the suction motor is sensing to increase the suction. Um, to me, that's kind of a silly design because if you're resisting or, or it's harder or it's noticing there's less airflow um, <clears throat> because you're on a denser pile carpeting, if it increases the suction, to me, that would just make it harder to push. But at that point, you need to open these um, the gates on the front of the cleaner head. Then you have an eco mode. The eco mode, of course, is going to give you the most amount of cleaning time, no matter if you're in handheld or in the um, <clears throat> using the cleaner head with the wand. Now, just like it's implied, only the auto mode will actually automatically change the suction control. And there's only two suction mode or suction levels that it'll go to or suction motor speeds that it'll go to, bare floor or carpet. It's not extreme, it's not variable, it's just changing between the two suction settings. And one thing that's pretty interesting is on this medium setting here, hopefully I can switch it without dropping it. On this medium setting running, we would get 40 min or 39 minutes of cleaning time. <clears throat> now, Hopefully I can do this with one hand. I can. If we leave that, which it'll call it auto mode now, now we're up to 42 minutes with the motorized head running on the machine. To me, that's pretty interesting. It's going to use more power just in handheld mode on this middle setting than it does also having to run the motor head. Now, I think it's because in handheld mode, it does increase the suction power to be able to actually effectively clean um, above floor surfaces because it's going to need a little bit of a boost um, because now it doesn't have the assistance of agitation or a sweeping action. That's really mostly the difference. Um, and then when we go to carpet, hear that increase. Now we're down, we almost, we pretty much reduced our runtime by half just to be able to do this. Now, if you go back to hard floors, you'll see your number go back up again. So it's constantly adjusting the runtime um, based off of the surface and the setting that you are using. Now, again, it's only going to adjust runtime based off the surface you're cleaning. If you're in the auto mode with this um, cleaner head attached, or if you're just running it in handheld mode, of course, you know, it's going to, um, and you're in medium suction, it'll adjust compared to the, me or the medium slash auto level with the cleaner head attached. So really, I, I like the fact that it conserves or it just kind of adapts all the time and shows you how much runtime it has. And it's pretty accurate. It even shows you the seconds, which is nice. It's not showing you just a battery level with percentages. It gives you a real time um, idea of if you continue to clean using this suction setting on this surface um, or whatever combinations, this is how long you have until the battery's dead. And the battery is removable 
It also has a rubber um, stopper on the back so you can lean it up against something for a short period of time. But you can um, purchase additional batteries and you can have as much cleaning time as you'd like. I have not felt the need to purchase additional batteries because I've never run this thing down even on two or three cleanings of what I need to clean in our house. Now, I have noticed that this is something that I will go and grab uh, instead of pulling out a full-size vacuum because this does give you very close to um, a corded vacuum's cleaning ability in terms of how well it cleans especially some of the cheaper options that you could buy at Walmart or Target or Macy's or wherever you want to buy an off-the-shelf vacuum, you can definitely get very similar cleaning results with one of these, um, at least the outsize that I have. I can't speak for just the standard V11, but I'm sure it's probably on par with those as well. Now, something I found very interesting with the Dyson V11 is... <clears throat> or the V11 outsize, or even the V15. I think it was mostly the V15 because I looked into purchasing the V15 Detect Absolute. The Dyson um, website claims that it's 99.97% or 94% um, or 99.97 or 99.94% um cleaning or filtration efficiency in your standard cleaning modes, but on boost, you have 99.99. Now, <clears throat> I've inferred to this in the past, and that's also one of the reasons why I think that my Shark um, Vertex Pro cordless powered lift away has poor filtering, filter, filtration efficiency is because it can only use cyclonic action for efficiency of filtration, depending on how fast the air is spinning inside the vacuum cyclones. So if you're using a lower power setting, you're going to sacrifice filtration efficiency because less speed, less airflow, less centrifugal force is occurring. So I think that that tends to be why some of the shark cordless vacuums get really caked with, um, like hair and nastiness. This is my Dyson um, filter. I, you can see how clean it is, even the HEPA filter. I've had this thing for two years, okay? Two years, and I haven't washed this one time. Not once. It hasn't needed it. Okay, so I have some stale saltine crackers that I'm going to try and crunch up as fine as I can. And then I'm going to put some over here on the floor. Ooh, I had a lot more there almost than on the carpet. So this is just, you know, for shits and giggles. Um, one of the annoyances that I have about this thing is there is some occasional hair wrap, but honestly, compared to some vacuums that I advertise um, anti-tangle, this thing is no, like, I really can't complain. There's only just um, sometimes a little bit of hair accumulation, but typically it comes right off um, just by using the vacuum. Um, this does not have a dirt sensing detection like some of the newer Dysons do. Um, and also, these tools, you hear them rattle a lot, especially when you're vacuuming um, hard floors because the vibration from the cleaner head really resonates up the um, wand. So here we go. Oh, and this is also on medium or auto mode. And um, so it's automatically going to ramp up the power, even though I can tell it already has because it's displaying a runtime of only 20 minutes or 21 minutes, which is what the runtime was when we were on the carpet cleaning mode. So... So it didn't push anything. 
But again, that's because I have those gates open. I wanted to see if we could see some agitation. And you can see a little. But it's pulling itself in. Some of the dirt gets pulled right in, even on carpet. It does do a very good job grooming. I'll show you. Honestly, it has a really good agitation, even better than a lot of corded vacuums. So we just transitioned. Now we're gonna go up in run time. Doubled the run time or over that, actually. You can see it will pull in dirt just for some real-time effect. I don't want to go super slow, but just like that, I mean, we cleaned up that whole mess. Oh, and let's see. There is a little piece that fell out there, but I honestly think that um, I might have shut the vacuum off right as it picked it up. But there it goes. There's nothing coming out the bottom give it some shakes. So honestly, I really can't complain about this. I do think that if you purchase one of these and there's a good look for the carpet grooming. Now, um, I think if you purchase these, you're not going to be disappointed. Though I know a lot of people will think, oh my goodness, like you're a Dyson fanboy, blah, blah, blah. Listen, it's a market option. I purchased it for the same reason that most people should purchase one of these for. For quick cleanings, maybe for some in-between cleanings, for something easy to grab um, and easy to use. It's pretty much maintenance-free. Like I said, I've never washed the filter on this thing, and it's never needed to be washed. But I also use it in combination of using... Um, my full size uprights and we have two Persian cats. They, they produce a lot of hair. So I think that the majority is this stringy hair that this vacuum will tend to pick up more often than not. But we don't have people tracking mud inside. We don't live around Georgia clay. We don't live around sand. Um, we don't like have issues where, you know, our carpets are visibly soiled and we're not keeping them clean. We keep a good maintenance cleaning going on. Um, so really the vacuum itself isn't being um, abused when we do go to vacuum because there's a bunch of stuff on the floor. So honestly, though, this is probably one of the best cordless vacuum cleaners that I've ever purchased. And I have no regrets. It was very expensive. Um, and here's a natural mess over here. It was very expensive to buy. You know, I don't know what that was because I feel like it kind of left a little bit of a streak. Oh, I think it might've been a little bit of soft candle wax, but that's okay. Um, I do take this apart. Um, it's very easy to remove the brush roll in this to be able to clean this whole cleaner head out, remove hair, and also clean this plastic portion. Um, but I know that it's candle wax um, that we must have missed, but now that the light is shining through because this got tipped over yesterday. But again, overall, I mean, this is a really great vacuum. And when you purchase one of the freestanding docking stations, you're just jacking this thing up to a whole new level. The accessibility, because it's constantly staying charged, it's ready to go, it's always upright, the attachments are all right there on the stand. It is a really great buy, in my opinion. There are going to be a lot of people who hate that I say that because they don't want to try a Dyson. Um, but... I do think that they do put a lot of engineering and their machines do work very well and they do have very good filtration as long as you take care of them and maintain them. Um, now, of course, that sounds like I'm contradicting myself. I was going to say contraindicating. Contradicting myself because I haven't washed the filter, but again, the filter hasn't needed it. 
um, because it's not abused and I'm also not picking up lots of fine powder and kind of subjecting it to a lot of dirt and grime. So thank you guys for watching. I always appreciate any comments that I get and, you know, interacting with the people um, that do choose to take the time to comment. So let me know what you guys think and if this is something that you guys own or would purchase.